make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Um, the Frail Elder Waiver. I want to kind of close with this because we've talked about the Frail Elder Waiver a little bit before. Um, it is, it is, the point of the Frail Elder Waiver is to keep you from going to a nursing home. Um, and, and if you are otherwise medically eligible to go to a nursing home, and the people who determine that are actually them, right? They, they have to decide if you're medically eligible. Then at that point, Mass Health really, really, really doesn't want you to go to a nursing home. Um, and so they really want to make sure you stay at home. And so suddenly, instead of just being willing to pay for a few hours of services, uh, they will pay for those services that, that uh, uh, they have determines are the services that are necessary in order to keep you in the community. So the question then is, as long as you otherwise qualify for Mass Health, because that's where Mass Health is concerned. So I'm just using this kind of as an example. If, su suppose that you are Phil and Irene, we changed from Frank and Mary because Brenda gave me new characters. So I adopted my parents' names, Phil and Irene. By the way, that was actually when I met my first home health care worker, was my, my father, actually, after my mother died. My, my father had somebody come in, and we were all like, a home care worker? Oh no, you know, to cut in. And it was this pleasant, you know, red-headed woman who came in, and actually, you no, know, my father really liked her. She would, like, come regularly. And, and, and it became a really important part of my father's, who couldn't cook for beans, you know, of his life in, in terms of helping him, especially kind of reestablishing re -establishing himself after my mother died. But suppose you got Phil and Irene, and they've got those assets. They've got $300,000, and, uh, and uh, let's say Irene or Phil has an IRA, and there's an annuity, and there's a bank account, so they've got uh, $625,000 in assets. Well. Uh, if, if, if Irene is the sick one, uh, and suppose Frank's got income of $1,000 a month and Mary's got income of $600 a month. If, if Irene, or... Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck are they? <laughs> Phil, Irene, right? <laughs> So to suppose that those are that those are their in, that those are their income limits, uh, and that's in in the if you are going through the frail elder program, uh, none of um, if Mary is trying to qualify, none of uh, Frank's income counts, nor do any of Frank's assets count. So as a practical matter, if you were trying to qualify Mary for the frail elder waiver, you could in this case take all of these assets simply transfer them to Frank, right? The house is not a countable asset when you're dealing with the, uh, the uh, frail elder waiver. And, and Mary could qualify for the frail elder waiver, and suddenly there would be these tremendous amounts of, of either Mary or Irene, either one of them could qualify. <laughs> uh, and so basically, I guess the point of this is that you could quali she could qualify for the frail elder waiver without having to spend down any of her assets. Next slide. Um, suppose that... Um, it, it, suppose that you have a single mother and a daughter who are living together. Suppose that you have Phyllis and her daughter Cindy, uh, and Phyllis has a house of, three, of the same kind of asset situation. Phyllis has fairly substantial uh, assets and just has Social Security income of $100,000. Once again, if you're at home, <laughs> I got so thrown off by the last slide that you threw me off. Suppose she has social security income of just $1,000 a month. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, in that situation, the, 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 uh, the, the home is not a countable asset because Irene is, or excuse me, because Phyllis is still living in it. The other assets might cause um, her to be over asset, but one of the things that she could do in that situation is she could buy an annuity. She could take those various assets and use the funds to buy an annuity, thereby increasing her income. As long as her income does not go above $2,022 per month, if I recall correctly, that's the, the magic number, uh, and she can basically take assets and turn them into income, then she too could qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver. And once again, once she is qualified for the Frail Elder Waiver, 
she can receive any level of services that are determined by, uh, to be appropriate by um, BACAC, by the, 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 uh, the area elder agency. Could you, get, could you, just from your experience in dealing with the frail elder waiver, could you give some examples of, of the programs that are maintaining people at home right now, right? Some of the plans that are actually in effect. Sure. Because they vary from plan to plan. Why don't you grab them? Well, there, there's the one that I mentioned earlier, which is, you know, someone will have someone um, three times a day, so morning, noon, and night, um, depending on their need. Uh, we also have people who um, go to the adult day health centers during the day, which is great because that frees up, you know, that, that's, you know, um, seven hours or so that they're, you know, at the adult day health center. So then we're able to have someone come in um, in the early morning and help them get ready to go to the adult day health center. Um, and then we can also have someone come at night and meet them, you know, when they're getting off the bus um, and help them get ready for bed and things like that. And Mass Health also covers the transportation to the adult yep. day center and yep. back from the adult day center. Yes, right. and the, sir, the uh, cost of the adult day health is completely covered by Mass Health as well. Um, so that's a good example. So in other words, the programs can be very, very broad. So if you're Cindy, you know, if you're, if you're living with your mother at home and you have a day job, right, you may very well be able to structure things, right, so that you can stay home, you can take care of your mother, you can keep your day job, and, and, and your mother can be adequately taken care of for the rest of the day, right? All of that paid for by Mass Health. I just wanted to add one other thing, and then we're going to open it up for questions. We have a few minutes left. We're going to open up for questions. Um, and that is one of the other alternatives that, 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 um, uh, I, that Phyllis would have in this case. Uh, if she is, literally, if she is eligible for, for mass health, that is kind of, means kind of by definition that she's disabled. Um, you have heard me talk about the so-called D4C pooled trusts. That if you, are a, if you are a disabled person and you're in a nursing home, you can always qualify for mass health by taking the funds that you have and transferring them into the pool trust for your own benefit. And then the trustees of the pool trust can provide money, it's your money, for all of the supplementary things that you could possibly need. So no matter who you are, no matter how much you have in assets, if you need to qualify for mass health, you can always do that by transferring the money into the pool trust. Now, I, I mention that because I know when I was here talking about those pool trusts, the so-called D4Cs, we were talking about it specifically as it affects nursing home folks. But this is the same thing. So, so in this case, you know, I guess the main thing to understand is that when, when people are facing this alternative of you know, things aren't going well and you're not doing great and the choices are either with, with some variety of family support or living with one of your children or whatever, you can stay home or you have to go to the nursing home. The main thing you want to understand is you have the option of doing either one. You always have the option of doing either one. And you always have the option of, ha of, of having mass health accepting for either one of those programs. You can always structure the assets that way.